Your Eminence, it's such an honor and blessing to have you here. Um, how have you been recently? When you were sick a while ago, we were all praying for you with heartfelt prayers. How have you been? I've been doing much better. I'm making a full recovery from the illness. And thank you so much for all your prayers because I am convinced it was the prayers that saved me. Absolutely. It's so good to hear that you're doing better. And yes, God took care of you. Um, regarding the pro-life movement, what, would you, what are your thoughts on the upcoming possibility of overturning Roe v. Wade, and what do you think this says about our country at the moment? There has always been a strong pro-life movement in this country, and I've always been convinced that the rank-and-file American is not in favor of killing babies in the womb. And I believe now that they are beginning to, to express their voice, and God willing, the Supreme Court will hand down the decision, which in some sad way was leaked in advance, but it's, it's a good decision, a good step forward to restoring the respect for the inviolable dignity of innocent and defense, defenseless life. So we all have to be prepared to be witnesses to that because there, there's no doubt there will be a violent reaction on the part of those who are anti-life and uh, who want to they want the culture of death that Roe versus Wade represents to continue. So we all have to be ready to to be witnesses and to suffer for the sake of the of defending innocent and defense of defenseless human life. Yes, definitely. And what do you think is the best way for us to live the pro-life mission and message at this point in time? For us as individuals and in our homes to make the, the respect for human life fundamental to our lives. And when we have individuals and families who are pro-life, that will transform the culture. And basically the movement, the pro-life movement in our country is made up of, of, of individuals and families who are committed uh, to living according to God's plan for us, which means that we, we defend and promote all human life from conception to natural death. Yes, and what is your message for the faithful at this time? To be, uh, to have hope, to trust our Lord's promises to us, that he will be with us in the church, that he will bring us to our eternal destiny if only we remain faithful. Many people today are becoming quite discouraged and some are even abandoning the church, but our Lord is in his holy church and we stay with him and he will not fail us, and our Blessed Mother will not fail to take us to him who is our salvation. Thank you so much. God bless you. Remnants, I um, uh, again, we're so honored to have you here today at the Shrine for this beautiful event. And uh, um, I, I want to ask you one question. Of course, you know, the greatest controversy that's been around, especially related to Fatima, has to do with the consecration. You know, the 1984 consecration, was it made properly? Was it not? Was it fulfilling Our Lady's request? Um, the consecration made this year on March 25th by the Holy Father uh, was, I, it, it was I, I thought it was an amazing day myself because here the Holy Father called for this from the request of the Ukrainian bishops primarily, but it was a consecration of you know, Russia and Ukraine and the whole world. But I felt that because so many bishops and priests and laity joined in, that I think some uh, tremendous things can come from that. What is your opinion and how do you feel about all this? Yeah. Yes, I would agree with you. I believe that the prayers of so many are lifted up to our Lord for peace in the world, for an end of this conflict, this terrible war, I should say, and all the atrocities, th there's no way that our Lord won't hear that prayer. And many join Pope Francis in making this prayer of consecration. Now, he himself made no mention of Fatima and, and never claimed that he was trying to fulfill what Our Lady uh, asked of us at Fatima. But nevertheless, the prayer uh, uh, will be heard, I believe, and, and uh, our Lord will respond to it. But what my message is, as I tried to express it in today's uh, homily, the consecration that our Holy Father made, in, according to what Our Lady has taught us at Fatima, demands of us praying the rosary daily, making acts of reparation, keeping the first Saturdays. And so I just urge everyone to begin uh, to pray the rosary, make acts of reparation, uh, observe the, the first Saturdays uh, in order to 
bring about peace in the world. And because she's told us that that is the way, and she's, we can trust that she's told us the truth. You know, the first Saturday's devotion is, in our opinion, the unfulfilled part of the Fatima message, yes. truly. And I think that's why we're promoting it so strongly today. And I do believe that when enough people do embrace the first Saturdays, we will see this triumph come. I, I, I absolutely, that's my belief too. And uh, so, but that's, I'm a little disappointed after the act of consecration by the Pope, nothing more has been said about how should the people now live this consecration because it's not just one act and then you expect a magical result from it. It's, it's a, a giving of yourself into the Immaculate Heart of Mary uh, for a peace in the world, and it involves prayer, reparation. That's very true, and I think because we, I think I believe that in 1984, yes, the consecration, again, the arguments of whether it was done properly or not will never be truly solved, but the reality is one thing that is certain is we did not live up to it afterwards. Look at the society, Look what we become, and I say that unless we take up the mantle, as you said, and really commit to what was being asked for to cooperate with that grace that was merited, you know, we're not going to go where we need to. Right? That's right. That's what that's what transforms lives, and that's what will transform the world. And because there is grace, there is the God's own life in in these prayers and in these acts of reparation, and they they always have their effect. Well, we, we keep praying. We pray for you. Thank you again for being with us today. It was wonderful every day. And uh, we're so, uh, um, again, I, I think there's a lot more work for all of us to do. So uh, as you said, <laughs> so thank, thank you so much. God bless.